What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack? That we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies? I know this is a formidable technical task, one that may not be accomplished by Technologies, the high-flying hardware computer company which took a nosedive this year, may be bought out by the British firm Applied Computer Technologies. Piloting the space shuttle is very difficult to do, one would think. Can a, a, a kid or a normal person actually pull this off? Well, what I did when I designed this was I, I understood that problem. Uh, it seems the sweep of technology has no limits. San Francisco this week, the world's first robot bartender was unveiled. The robot can talk, can take spoken orders, and can mix 200 different drinks. But on the first test run, the robot knocked a glass off the bar and onto the floor and poured beer all over the counter. The robot's designer said there were still some bugs to be worked out. change okay georgia dinkov raymond pete we're talking about borders right do you want to back up a little bit and just uh maybe rehash the first part of that conversation because that was pretty interesting i i i think you mentioned uh, that some uh, federal police uh, uh, other than the national guard uh, were involved in the portland uh, violence uh, the the um, reporters were uh, aware of the police uh, violence, and so they got organized and were uh, keeping careful watch on what the police were doing. And so the the police were arresting reporters. Uh, the mayor uh, got involved and got gassed, uh, and uh, uh, so the, the the local police themselves uh, were involved. But uh, uh, the homeland security. Uh, was probably uh, doing some of the nastiest stuff. Uh, the Border Patrol uh, ha has no limits on their authority. Uh, they can go into your house and search your person, uh, do anything they want uh, without a warrant. Uh, and that applies to uh, everyone within 100 miles of any border. Uh, that means Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Canada, and Mexico and includes about two-thirds of uh, the U.S. population, uh, and uh, most of the major cities are within 100 miles of the border. So, so their jurisdiction has just been expanded, but it seems like the... I have uh, I remember the Boston bombing when they were just like strolling down the streets and entering people's houses. Do they do they even have to have like a special task force to even do that kind of thing? It seems like they can do whatever they want. <laughs> I, I, they do it anyway, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it just happens that the Border Patrol, uh, uh, the, the real people working at the borders uh, can follow you and and uh, uh, open your your car and documents and uh, take your equipment or whatever they want to do uh, as long as they're within 100 miles of the border. Mm -hmm. uh, but technically, it, it applies all the time uh, to everyone within that uh, massive amount of territory. I remember during the Boston bombings, they uh, invoked something called exigent circumstances to like be able to go into people's houses and search for the two uh, these two uh, bombers. And then under apparently uh, under the official rules, they're not supposed to if they find something illegal during that search because it's executed without a warrant. They're technically looking for these two bad people. If they find you doing something illegal like growing weed in your basement or anything similar to that. Uh, they're not supposed to be. This it's not supposed to be admissible in court, and they're not supposed to be using it to prosecute people. Guess what happened? Two weeks after the 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 Boston bombers got caught, forty seven people got indicted for like growing weed, um, having like ecstasy, small amount of pills on them on on their property and things like that. And all of that was obtained um, during those searches under exigent circumstances. 
And when the lawyer said, this is not admissible, you're not supposed to be using it, the government said, oh, no, it's we're invoking national security, so everything's classified, and these people are convicted, but you you cannot know why and, and, and you know what the reason is. So they very much abuse the law any way they want, it seems. Uh, uh, yeah, convicting on the basis of secret evidence, having secret laws, uh, keeping... Uh, essential documents uh, secret forever, uh, especially when they w would incriminate uh, huge numbers of people. The, the, when you were dealing with Blake College in Mexico and you were coming back into the States, were you harassed, were you ever harassed by, by, by Border Patrol for political reasons? Uh, yeah, I, I considered it. Uh, I, I was very careful not to have any uh, uh, botanical matter uh, <laughs> uh, stuck to my clothes or anything, uh, but uh, they would do things uh, like uh, once I was bringing a, a little uh, clay flute, and uh, uh, they scraped it to see if it was uh, uh, solidified uh, cocaine or something, <laughs> and uh, pried the heels off my shoes to see if. Well, wow. Ray, Ray, does contact tracing just send chills down your spine? Uh, uh, that's a what? Does contact tracing just uh, send chills down your spine? Oh, oh, oh uh, no more than uh, the, the usual awareness of, of what they're doing without calling it anything special. Mm -hmm. I, what is contact uh, tracing? Uh, the, the infected people uh, uh, getting near... Uh, uh, someone else they they, they can uh, uh, follow all of the uh, I interacting chains of of more or less uh, uh, direct social contacts. Wow. But it, th that requires th those people uh, somehow um, cooperating, right? You have to install something on your phone, or do you think they're tagging people somehow uh, biologically at this uh, point? Uh, no, no. If they have a cell phone. Uh, they trace them by that, uh, get the uh, phone company records to uh, find their location. Uh, and uh, uh, mostly it's going through cell phone tracing, I think. Do you think the government is interested in biological tagging? Well, eventually they'll get to that. I have a, a view of the future of people being called by contact tracers and, and talking about a barbecue they went to last week. That sounds sounds pretty miserable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, having a big babysitter like that. Um, yeah, so Ray, since we last chatted, is there something, uh, before we get, like kind of dive into it, is there anything that you, you feel like is specifically developed over the last month um, that should be a kind of a central idea, maybe maybe vaccination, because we're, we're just uh, thrusting towards that uh, point where I imagine that will be a, another milestone of this hysteria of of whenever that comes out. And then in preparation for that, I was reading a little bit about um, pandemics uh, and I, I, didn't, I wasn't sure if you had any thoughts on that whole fiasco. Uh, uh, there, there was a huge epidemic of narcolepsy in Finland uh, immediately after a, a vaccination campaign. Uh, and uh, I imagine uh, that's the uh, one, one of the uh, bases of the uh, that, that uh, action against the, uh, the maker of that particular vaccine. Uh, there were several other countries that had uh, epidemics of narcolepsy, but not as big as Finland. Uh, but um, I, I think one of the uh, things that needs to be done is uh, to get information on uh, the, the people who were vaccinated for influenza last year in that huge campaign of getting especially old people. Uh, that would include everyone in uh, the rest homes and convalescent homes, uh, so they would be 100% uh, vaccinated for flu 
last year, and all of the studies uh, done on uh, the follow-up, uh, looking for the uh, uh, effect of flu vaccines on uh, the following year's uh, incidence of influenza, and they managed to find a way to claim uh, a certain amount of uh, uh, prevention of flu uh, using very, very odd methods, very special for uh, uh, looking at the efficacy of a flu vaccine. But something that came out in all of those studies was a very big increase in the incidence of other respiratory infections, even though they saw a slight decrease in flu, uh, there was a great inf increase in coronavirus infections. Uh, and just looking at those published papers, uh, you would assume uh, that uh, the, the great mortality uh, from coronavirus uh, uh, was undoubtedly increased by the fact that they were uh, probably 100% vaccinated for flu the previous uh, just a few months earlier. And if you look at uh, immune activation uh, on PubMed, uh, you'll find lots of uh, studies of the damaging effects uh, of basically any kind of uh, immune activation, meaning uh, activating an inflammatory process. Uh, if it happens during pregnancy, such as uh, either an, uh, a bacterial or viral infection occurring naturally uh, or a flu vaccine with, with a, an aluminum adjuvant in it, any activation of the immune system during pregnancy has very great long-term, lifelong effects on, on the fetus. The next generation uh, will have depression and uh, all, all kinds of uh, after effects. Uh, and cognition is one of the major themes uh, of, of uh, the degree of immune activation, uh, the number of uh, pathogens you've been exposed to uh, corresponds negatively uh, to mental ability. Good. Have you seen uh, people with the Gulf War syndrome, Ray? They, when they give interviews, they look like they're about to fall asleep, and they, many of them suffer from narcolepsy. Do you think serotonin is somehow involved in that, that symptomatology? Uh, oh, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, whatever they were exposed to, uh, including uh, 20 vaccines, I think, at least, uh, just to go there. Uh, Ray, what... What can we learn from the H1N1? Was that? Do you think that was a, a failed attempt to do what they're doing now? Maybe maybe uh, 10 years ago, not as many things were put into place uh, like they are now. For, for example, like Gates is intertwined with not only the, the um, vaccines, but also the identification and the contact tracing. And so clearly there's a big spider web of things that had to be in place before something of this magnitude could be employed and, and set up so thoroughly? Uh, that's possible. Uh, uh, are you familiar with the uh, 1976 outbreak, swine flu? Uh, at the time, I think the propaganda was uh, that they had identified it as the same as the 1918 influenza epidemic. Uh, outbreak that killed supposedly 50 to 100 million people around the world. Uh, uh, but uh, at, in 1918, people had no idea uh, what the cause of influenza was. They thought it was bacterial. Uh, and uh, so on the basis of uh, finding a few frozen corpses uh, and finding uh, this coronavirus or, or flu, flu virus in them, uh, the, the I think it was H1N1, uh, they declared that that was the cause of the 1918 uh, epidemic. Uh, the, the, 
science of the 1918 pandemic was even worse than the present science. And the the man in charge of of um, evaluating influenza uh, uh, vaccines in 1976 uh, was telling his bosses uh, that uh, the, the, the vaccines were going to cause more harm than good because uh, the uh, uh, virus uh, uh, always mutates uh, ahead of uh, any vaccine. Uh, and uh, he, he uh, went public uh, with his uh, information that there was no safe safety data uh, and lots of harm uh, documented. Uh, and so he got fired, uh, and um, they they went ahead with the, the production of the vaccines, uh, killed a lot of people, uh, paralyzed hundreds, uh, paid off a large amount of money to the the injured or killed uh, people, uh, but uh, the, the, there never was an H1N1 or swine flu uh, uh, epidemic at all in the United States in in 1976. Have you seen the recent study that came out about 5G uh, electromagnetic fields potentially capable of inducing the organism to synthesize the coronavirus de novo without any external infection? Um, that would be in line with um, Montagnier's uh, uh, experiments with uh, the, the virus acting as an antenna and transmitter. Exactly. And and the, the study that just came out is by five... Um, Two, I think three, three of them are physicists, uh, two of them are doctors, they're all Italians from the uh, Guillermo Marconi University, I believe in Italy, which is a fairly legitimate um, institute of higher education, and, and it seems to be peer-reviewed and published, and they, they describe the exact same mechanism that because the 5G electromagnetic waves are, are, are of such a short wavelength, they can actually get inside cells, and the cells can act as antennas, and then the DNA can act as an inductor, um, and then because the when the body is exposed to these 5G fields, the the movement that these waves induce into the uh, in in the DNA is causing certain gaps to appear in the cell, and apparently the cell is trying to plug that to so to, so to speak, and it's producing RNA that is indistinguishable from the RNA of the coronavirus. At least that's what the study claims. Mm -hmm. do, does it sound feasible or at least or even possible or do you think it's far-fetched uh, when I was taking a developmental biology someone accidentally put in a, a, a publication from around 1940 in which they were uh, exposing uh, cells to foreign protein uh, and uh, then uh, reproducing uh, in culture uh, several generations of the exposed cell uh, and finding that it was emitting copies uh, of the protein it had been exposed to. Uh, that was a perfect demonstration that a, a cell can perceive a, a very different molecule that it presumably could not possibly have a, a, a DNA for, uh, and after uh, exposure and uh, 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 multiplication, several, uh, I think, 10 or more generations of cell division, it was still producing uh, very measurable amounts of this foreign protein. So uh, that indicated that cells have an apparatus for copying a protein, uh, transforming the information from the sequence of the protein into a sequence of DNA or RNA, and uh, then reading out endless copies uh, of a, a protein indistinguishable from the one it was exposed to. And, and 
I, I commented on that paper and and then disappeared from the file, and I hadn't made <laughs> notes on it, so I think it was disappeared from the whole library because <laughs> someone had accidentally included it. So under the same principle, we could be producing HIV endogenously, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's Montagnier's uh, uh, argument and, and why he's banned and went to China to work. Okay. To, to back up a little bit, the the pan uh, pandemics. The interesting thing in this BMJ article, uh, they say the controversy erupted when the German newspaper Der Spiegel reported that top politicians and government employees were going to receive a Selva pan and Baxter's unadjuvenated H1N1 vaccine, not pandemics. And so I. I that seems especially um, prudent to point out the what's fit for the the peons is not fit for the government employees, and so they're going to get the unadjuvenated uh, uh, vaccine. And I imagine something similar will happen for whatever is released uh, for coronavirus. Uh, much less harmful and almost totally ineffective. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, well, another thing I wanted to bounce off you, apparently this pandemic went through uh, like a series of tests that were like, well, not we're, but whoever's producing the Moderna or whatever are, is not even going to do. And so in your estimation, how much more dangerous is something re released for coronavirus going to be than even this narcolepsy inducing pandemics? Uh, uh, this will be the first RNA uh, vaccine. Uh, and uh, I, I think uh, the people who are talking about it and making it are, are probably totally unaware uh, that our cells have lots and lots of reverse transcriptases just waiting uh, for a, a bit of foreign uh, RNA to come in to make copies and send it into our genome uh, as permanent uh, DNA. Uh, so, so that our uh, great great grand descendants uh, will be able to uh, m make the uh, uh, most toxic spike protein part of the virus uh, in un uncontrolled uh, quantities. If we can uh, multiply it uh, to produce uh, immunity to it, uh, we're going to be able to multiply it uh, and our descendants uh, will be able to uh, produce the same uh, thing. And in itself, uh, it, uh, the whole story of the spike protein uh, and uh, what it does, what, why it is the key to making the virus uh, infectious for humans, uh, which all of the studies of the last uh, 10 or 15 years uh, have been working on, uh, perfecting uh, that spike protein so it fits uh, a human uh, uh, ACE2 uh, enzyme. Uh, ACE2 is the uh, enzyme that detoxifies uh, angiotensin, uh, destroys our basic inf inflammation uh, and blood pressure raising uh, 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 peptide. Uh, uh, and so the the danger of having a lot of coronavirus is simply that it creates inflammation by knocking out our intrinsic defense against angiotensin. And um, that fact has been covered up or ignored or put into a some some way of thinking about uh, the, the idea that the virus and its replication uh, create the disease somehow. Uh, so the disease will be uh, centered where you find the virus, which is the lungs and the intestine. Uh, but uh, it also turns out to be the heart and the gonads and lots of other tissues. But uh, the intestine and the respiratory membranes uh, are actually uh, major sites of 
viral replication. So they they say uh, inflammation of the lungs is what you you have to uh, think about. But uh, when you knock out ACE2, you're creating systemic inflammation. Uh, and uh, inflammation uh, of the bowel uh, creates systemic uh, inflammation. So the, the whole thing is uh, the turning on of the angiotensin system. Uh, and if the spike protein uh, can't undergo a series of conformation changes, it can't uh, create the conformation that makes the perfect receptor binding uh, 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 site uh, and the spike protein doesn't work, the virus isn't infective. And uh, I found a recent uh, publication, uh, C. Tolzer et al., T-O-E-L-Z-E-R, showing that the final step in forming the active binding site of the spike protein requires the binding of linoleic acid, which it finds on the cell surface, if the person has been eating their vegetable oil uh, regularly. Uh, the, the more linoleic acid uh, you have floating around in your system, the more likely the virus is to be uh, activated and successful in sticking to you and causing inflammation. Uh, and uh, that has only been published in abstract form so far, and I'm afraid it isn't uh, going to make it much farther because of its uh, implications for nutrition. Well, Ray, if you were an evil maniac working in a lab, it was, is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system something to target to to produce incredibly negative effects in a, a wide variety of people? Um, uh, yeah, it, it, <laughs> it uh, exists in everyone in every cell. Uh, they used to think it was uh, uh, a matter of the uh, liver and kidney uh, I- interacting. Uh, renin and so on, uh, but, but uh, mast cells in any tissue can make renin, and then local uh, uh, converting uh, uh, enzymes can, can uh, convert the renin into the series of angiotensin peptides, uh, so it's a, a local uh, inflammation promoter uh, anywhere you have a, a mast cell or or many other uh, 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 basic uh, defense uh, immune uh, uh, re- related uh, uh, en- enzymes uh, it, it's a, a, a universal thing more more basic than uh, uh, nitric oxide uh, and uh, e- estrogen uh, serotonin, for example, it, it closely relates to those, uh, turns them on. Uh, uh, it's an activator of aromatase, for example. Uh, so it activates this explosion of all kinds of, of uh, inflammation promoters, cytokines, and so on. Uh, and, and so if you can uh, knock out the enzyme that destroys that, uh, you've uh, created with, with the least effort the most destruction. Um, I have a question. If, let's say, the body is exposed to these foreign DNA slash RNA from viruses or vaccines, and it, it, it internalizes them as part of the DNA, and then we know that under stress, the body starts shedding these the retroviruses into the bloodstream, does it do so haphazardly, or does it pick out specific things that it has internalized to sort of start deploying into the bloodstream? Or is it simply a, a just a, like a random reaction to stress, just dumps whatever it has? I, I, I think it's uh, regulated by a, a, a very uh, ultra-organized system. That, that, that antenna we were talking about, um, uh, uh, there is a website called Cell intelligence, uh, uh, 
what's his name, uh, Albrecht Bueller, uh, a, a very good website in which he uh, gives his argument that uh, the cell knows how to call up uh, exactly the genes it wants uh, by such things as the antigen that it's exposed to. Uh, the cell has a reading system like a, like a super librarian that knows where to find everything specifically. And uh, the normal uh, use of the system that reads out retroviruses is, uh, I, I, I'm sure it's the uh, same system that, that produces the exosomes, uh, which are uh, part of a repair system, a repair and maintenance system uh, that uh, replicates uh, RNA and DNA and proteins as needed, uh, forming these particles uh, that are uh, almost uh, under a microscope indistinguishable, indistinguishable from the uh, 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 coronavirus and other viruses and manufactured in the uh, um, uh, endoplasmic reticulum and secreted in the same way into the bloodstream. Uh, but uh, they have to be, uh, for example, if you have uh, injured uh, lung tissue that needs repair, it composes by drawing out just the RNA, uh, DNA, and proteins uh, that are needed for repair to compose exosomes, which it puts into the bloodstream, and they travel uh, to the bone marrow uh, where they're picked up uh, by the the cells that are uh, uh, more or less stem cells uh, waiting for a call for help. Uh, and they are taken up and uh, processed the same way a vaccine will be processed. Uh, these exosomes, virus-like particles, are taken up by the bone marrow cells, uh, cause the bone marrow cells to differentiate into a pre-lung cell, not, not quite a stem cell, but a stem cell differentiating towards becoming a lung cell, and are then excreted back into the, the, the whole cell, uh, leaves the marrow, uh, and it enters the bloodstream, uh, where it's, uh, because it's uh, already on the pathway to becoming lung tissue, it uh, is recognized and, and uh, sticks to the region where it's needed as repair. Uh, it's it's like a, a, a repair lung tissue that has wandered away, and so it, it sticks when it gets where it's needed uh, and uh, does its job of, of repairing the, the, the injury. Uh, so it's a, a very powerful, specific intra-body communication system uh, between stem cells and injured cells. So basically the, these viruses that we're internalizing are, are like tissue-specific alarm signals that can be called upon for help when needed. Uh, yeah, uh, and so um, uh, random stuff getting added to that system is going to have the potential to change our development a course of development. So what do you know if there's any sort of, fi I don't want to say fixed capacity, but is there any limit on the amount of external DNA, RNA um, information material that the body can internalize? Any kind of what DNA? Uh, uh, is, is there any limit to the sto to the storage or the capacity of the for storage of the body for external information? I, I think the body probably uh, has various filters, uh, but uh, a lab in Germany has published many papers uh, showing that the, the DNA in our foods can be found in our cells. Uh, so there, there is. Uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, uptake even from our foods. Uh, and uh, uh, autopsies 
uh, and women who have had two or three husbands have demonstrated uh, DNA uh, from husbands one and two, as well as uh, the most recent one uh, in her tissues, including brain tissue. Uh, so uh, she's uh, putting away and storing uh, uh, the semen DNA. Uh, probably uh, those are are useful because uh, there there are cases where, uh, uh, for example, a, a white man going into a, a totally black part of Africa uh, 50 or 60 years ago and and having kids, uh, a picture of his uh, kids uh, were progressively lighter. Each each baby uh, got paler. Uh, as uh, the, the woman accumulated his DNA, is that the is that the principle uh, that explains telegony? Do you think? Uh, um, uh, yeah, I've, I think it's similar to uh, xenia, and uh, specifically, uh, I think it would be uh, telegony. Okay. Well. I, I was going to change topic, so interrupt me, Georgie. But um, right, we some of the, crit the criticisms of these conversations is that we kind of jumped off into things a thousand miles per hour of the the so called c conspiracy things that we talk about. So maybe, um, well, number one, can you even separate uh, health and food and nutrition from a deteriorating environment? And then number two, maybe uh, like. I imagine your like consciousness of the powers that be that was before the internet. And some people were curious, like, how did you even learn these things? Uh, because, um, I mean, that would be interesting in general. How did, how did I learn? Yeah. yeah. Uh, which thing uh, the, 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 the uh, the odd biology or, no. uh, or political <laughs> the, the, the I mean, investigating the powers that be, the DuPonts, the Morgans, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds. How, how did you come to learn what was really going on? You called your parents co-conspirators a while ago. W was that information they had already figured out? And uh, b b I mean, I, so I think about the Internet and how it was integral for me learning about 9-11 or UFOs or whatever. And, and that opening up uh, me to different possibilities but i imagine that would be very difficult without the internet but maybe i'm just short short-sighted uh, oh um uh, up up until uh, uh, right after the world war ii uh, people used to talk a lot uh, and a lot of it uh, was uh, personal experience and uh, uh, the, there was a lot of mimeographed uh, underground stuff going around, uh, uh, very small numbers, uh, but uh, people who were curious uh, could uh, get a fairly good picture uh, of uh, uh, what the government was doing in medicine, for example. Uh, never got in the newspapers, uh, but uh, it could be documented later. Uh, and uh, once you uh, find a library that has been careless about censorship. Uh, when I first went to the uh, University of Oregon in 1956, uh, I went as an English major, but I found anthropology and uh, biology stuff a lot more interesting. Uh, so I read lots in those areas and uh, ten years later, uh, I went, went back to the uh, library looking for those books. Uh, none of the most interesting ones were there anymore. Uh, and they had opened a bookstore uh, in the basement uh, selling uh, unwanted books for a nickel or a dime. What do you do you think? Uh, what <laughs> what I know you talk about this in your um, uh, how do we know newsletter of a person, their consciousness changing as their their structure changes. Do you think 
uh, because something we've heard is that, you know, you guys should really just stick to talking about nutrition. Do you think you can talk about health without addressing these, like kind of investigating these things or are they mutually exclusive or, or what do you think? Uh, uh, yeah, health uh, in, involves interaction with the uh, environment, uh, uh, air, air, food, and information, and the medical system, uh, and the various sources of poisoning. Uh, and so you immediately uh, uh, start, uh, uh, as soon as you uh, think about a, a symptom, uh, and uh, what doctors uh, do about it, uh, immediately uh, you're involved in politics. Uh, and uh, then when you start uh, investigating any little part, uh, either political uh, or historical or uh, biological, uh, whatever, uh, you find uh, that that leads into a, a more and more uh, expansive uh, Im implications. Uh, uh, it uh, takes years and years to put together a, a, a fairly general uh, picture, but it, it starts with uh, the, the suspicion that things aren't what uh, what they're uh, said to be in, in the regular newspapers, radio, and television. Uh, uh, like in 1945, uh, uh, on the radio, Harry Truman said, uh, uh, we have just dropped uh, an atomic bomb on Hiroshima, a military base. Uh, and uh, I, I started uh, thinking about that and uh, tried to uh, uh, find out more about it. And then it turned out Hiroshima was a big city. Uh, and then uh, uh, later... Uh, every anniversary, they would repeat uh, Truman's announcement, but it was uh, uh, d d that phrase was deleted, uh, just neatly clipped out, uh, and the tape joined together. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I started uh, 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 doubting and looking for background information uh, every, every time uh, uh, Roosevelt. Every time Eisenhower would talk, uh, I would uh, see if there were alternative opinions and objections, uh, and uh, started seeing what what a, an immense web of corruption uh, Eisenhower was involved in, uh, money flowing from the oil industry, uh, uh, hydroelectric industry, uh, all. Uh, uh, very big uh, in industries were uh, funneling money to to him uh, uh, to to buy his support for their policies. Uh, uh, was Senator Wayne Morse uh, was uh, someone who uh, started investigating uh, uh, that sort of corruption uh, uh, around the same time uh, Senator Estes Kefauver. Uh, did the investigation of the drug industry, uh, and uh, he was uh, by far the most popular presidential candidate, uh, but the party did the usual thing uh, and uh, elected a, a, a right-wing, middle-of-the-roader uh, 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 as their two-time unsuccessful candidate. <laughs> uh, keep to keep out a anyone who uh, w was really interested in starting to uh, investigate uh, uh, what the government was really about. The the ability to memory hole uh, the the manipulator's ability to memory hole information is is like astounding to me. <laughs> you know, like every event will have a series of anomalies, and but they are they are totally eliminated within, I don't know, a few days or a few weeks. And then the narrative is crafted. It's cemented in Wikipedia and then never, and nobody ever thinks about it again. 
<laughs> so it, it's it's pretty i mean just living through that in real time and you have a way broader sense of that than i do but um go. you have to you have to document uh, <laughs> the the validity of the documents themselves because uh, those are very often forged uh, uh, it, just just uh, uh, destroying them is the first thing but but they have done lots of very convincing forgeries. Uh, and uh, uh, when the documents are sealed uh, during, during that, uh, keeping them from the public, uh, you can be sure that there are uh, people uh, working on uh, expunging uh, the, the most incriminating material. Uh, documents aren't safe uh, anywhere uh, in the government, uh, so you have to uh, uh, look uh, critically at, at e even the documents that uh, should be the, the last word. Uh, you, you have to look for uh, eye eyewitnesses, uh, people who lived through it uh, and can tell the story. Uh, and when you uh, uh, see several people who had uh, similar experiences didn't know each other but had exactly uh, the same sort of experience, uh, th then you can uh, start to uh, uh, form an opinion about what really happened. Uh, uh, almost all of 20th century history, as far as it regards uh, uh, Nazi Germany uh, and the Soviet Union, uh, is based on forgeries as far as uh, American historians are concerned. I, I I would love to get into that. The one uh one other question. It, uh, I was just watching uh John Oliver who has kind of replaced the Daily Show as a um a lot of people really go to that show for information. It's like a, kind of a comedy slash political show, and he just did one on conspiracy uh theory, so called. And his dominant point, as I'm sure you've heard hundreds of times, is but like nobody can keep a secret. And so what would I, like when reading Fletcher Prouty's, um the secret team, he goes into great length talking about compartmentalization and like the whole setup of the CIA is keeping secrets. And so wh how, how, why do you think that's so something that's so commonly misunderstood? Like uh, obviously these, these intelligence apparatuses could not function if they, they, had the inability to keep information secret. Um, uh, yeah, the the, the, um, uh, the the mass media uh, uh, can keep even when the secret is out and uh, hundred or five hundred people know it. Uh, the mass media can keep uh, everyone else, uh, everyone that counts, uh, from knowing it. Uh, uh, just just this last week, uh, someone I had lost touch with uh, for 55 years uh, heard uh, uh, me on one of these talk programs and uh, got in touch, uh, and uh, we're starting to put together uh, experiences from uh, things related to the uh, government shutting down uh, Blake College. He was there through the whole thing and uh, uh, experienced uh, 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 a lot of things that uh, I, I didn't have any perspective on at all. So it's, uh, we're going to put together a, a new picture that neither of us uh, could have uh, formed independently. Uh, and uh, if we could get in touch with uh, other people who had gone through that uh, uh, experience, uh, then we could start to put together a, a historical picture. Uh, uh, he's Luis Urias, who was uh, uh, an associate of, of uh, Alejandro Hodorowski, who made the, the movies. Uh, Holy, uh, Holy Mountain. Uh, uh, what the was Holy, Holy Mountain movie? Am I getting the title wrong? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, Holy yeah. Mountain. Uh, and, um, he was going to make Dune, but never did. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
how Luis was involved in a lot of his projects. Uh, and uh, Luis says uh, he, he thinks uh, important historical information will, will come out of uh, several of us putting together of what the government was doing there. Uh, there were so many government agencies involved. Uh, I have a question which is kind of related. It's half political, half health-wise. In one of the interviews with Danny, you said that civilization's best chance of escaping is somewhere in uh, Western Latin America. So would you say that it's, it's fairly fairly justified at this point to say that civilization is in some process of decline? That's my first question. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, the, the, um, uh, as the... Uh, Empire and the ecology decline. Uh, the civilization is being taken down with it. Uh, the, the CIA did a great job on degrading the civilization throughout the world uh, with their Congress for uh, Cultural Freedom uh, in 1950. Uh, uh, with, with their... Uh, uh, action art, action expressionism, and so on. So the way I look at civilization is sort of like a, 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 um, an, a, an analogy of metabolism at the social level. So if, if at the organism level we have a process like cancer, which is basically a, a, revert, a reversal back to a more primitive life form, which uh, can only produce energy in a very primitive way, um, can the same thing happen at the society level or even at the species level? In other words, can evolution not go in reverse but kind of take a few ste steps back? Is that possible, do you think? Uh, uh, yeah, the, the picture that is imposed uh, as part of the cultural uh, sustaining uh, system uh, justifying uh, this particular kind of authoritarian individualism, uh, uh, that goes with an ideology and uh, an ontology really about the very nature of of uh, what matter is it comes down in their view uh, to quanta uh, uh, it's a digitized uh, view of the substance uh, that we're made of uh, and so of our cells and uh, uh, genetic information uh, it, it uh, is reductionism uh, made into a universal uh, philosophy of being, uh, which necessarily extends into this uh, uh, individualism, a particular uh, philosophy of individualism uh, as the basis. Uh, Margaret Thatcher's idea, society doesn't exist. Uh, it's only... Uh, the quanta uh, uh, that make up uh, the personality, uh, the, the concept of long-range order in the cell, uh, which is uh, necessary for these antenna functions or, or cell intelligence functions. Uh, you, long-range order doesn't exist in the same sense that society doesn't exist for Margaret Thatcher's uh, type uh, and uh, so the uh, digitizing of uh, e ethics, uh, uh, politics, education, uh, everything is part of the uh, very deep degradation uh, of the whole business. Uh, if you see the substance we're made of uh, in a certain way, that means uh, we have that same uh, digitized uh, quality. Our consciousness is ultimately uh, like computer consciousness. It's it's only uh, pattern patterns uh, of meaningless fragments, uh, uh, on or off uh, signals, uh, and uh, 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 so so it uh, really removes. Uh, the the best basis for criticism and correction uh, at all of these levels. Uh, so it, it, as far as uh, it has become the the dominant 
philosophy of uh, uh, information handling and using computers uh, uh, that then it has, has destroyed uh, our ability to uh, build up something new. Uh, to use the cancer analogy again, uh, at the organismic level, uh, basically the organism can only tolerate so much of a reversal, a, a degradation of the energetic process. So at the social level, do you think something similar might happen or do you think society can successfully revert to a more primitive structure and, and, and maintain it stably? Or do you think, similar to the organism, once the social cancer gets into effect and it consumes enough of the ability of society to to produce, to maintain um, a high level of consciousness, eventually it will be the same collapse as it happens at the organismic level. So in other words, do you think this process can be evolution, social evolution can go back a few steps and stay at the brute level of the barbarian level? Or do you think nature will simply not tolerate that and say, the heck with it, uh, you know, we're going to collapse and then start rebuilding everything from scratch? Um. That that um, the, um, the, the there are reasons for thinking that that there has been a threshold passed uh, that if we uh, uh, don't uh, somehow uh, establish uh, an energetic uh, uh, functional society uh, that uh, uh, like like the ecosystem uh, there there might be a point at which. Uh, regeneration uh, of forests uh, is no longer possible, uh, but uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, there are uh, some kinds of evidence that suggest that, uh, uh, for example, in the tundra, uh, the melding tundra uh, has a capacity probably, uh, and subterranean uh, uh, methane clathrates uh, are another source of carbon. Uh, that uh, as these melt, vast amounts of carbon dioxide uh, coming into the uh, atmosphere, uh, going up from uh, parts per million uh, to uh, something like 1% or 2%, uh, uh, a gigantic increase in CO2 uh, would, would uh, change mental function, mental energy, uh, knock out, uh, the inflammatory degenerative diseases uh, uh, increase uh, the the, uh, the growth of forests uh, and uh, allow uh, the, the reconstruction of, of much of what has been destroyed uh, just on the basis of uh, a sort of uh, uh, explosive uh, uh, he healing uh, 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 a dose of carbon dioxide to suppress the the, the uh, inflammatory processes that we're, we're now under the influence of. Um, do you think a large n large numbers of people, as in let's say like the United States, hundreds of millions, um, can naturally live live in a peaceful, well functioning, structured, productive society? Do you think there is a certain density of people per? per like a unit of land that that may be limiting a factor or do you think it's entirely the structures that these people build that either enable the development or, or contribute to the collapse? Uh, uh, with a population of this size, it, it's going to take some organization beyond uh, uh, just in individual family farms. Uh, it's going to take uh, something like cooperative farms uh, to um, uh, have efficiency uh, uh, to uh, uh, use use land uh, more efficiently than uh, 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 private farmers could uh, uh, buying buying uh, diesel for their uh, equipment uh, everyone having their own machinery uh, a tremendous expense would go into uh, uh, trying to survive in family farms uh, that probably wouldn't be possible uh, at this number of people uh, but I think there's plenty of, of productive land that if people can form cooperative groups, uh, it could be politically compatible groups uh, breaking up in the regions uh, in which they use start using the land 
and resources uh, for survival and development rather than uh, uh, destructive exploitation. Okay. What do you think is the most anti-civilization factor that humans have come up with so far in their in their social development? Um, would you, I mean, examples, money, property, um, I don't know, organized medicine, organized education. Is there anyone you would single out specifically? Uh, militarism uh, is the first. Uh, uh, there have been important uh, anthropologists saying that uh, militarism is the essence of civilization, but uh, I think it's the, it's the essence of uh, uh, everything going downhill. What about uh, things like grain agriculture? It seems that health throughout throughout the history of the world has, I mean, it has allowed the creation of massive empires at the cost of massively reduced individual health, simply because they went to grain agriculture. Um, uh, yeah, to, to restore the productivity of the land, uh, it's going to take uh, diversification, uh, uh, getting more trees uh, uh, to um, uh, create water retention, soil retention, uh, and uh, 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 cool, cool the summers, uh, uh, level the rainfall out, uh, uh, so it doesn't come in in cloud bursts. Uh, 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 radically changing the, the nature of the landscape. Uh, the, the the buffalo and the grass uh, were uh, a very stable, uh, uh, soil preserving, water preserving uh, uh, system, uh, but. Uh, uh, without uh, going back to that and having uh, having uh, dairy herds grazing on uh, natural prairie grass uh, that that could be done in some regions uh, but but I think uh, the, the uh, climate modifying uh, uh, development of forests uh, restoring uh, all of the southern southeastern uh, US forests w- would be a big step uh, restoring uh, as much as possible of the West Coast uh, heavy forestation uh, would be another climate uh, reversing uh, uh, process. Um, what, what do you think the optimal food supply system would look in a in a in a pro civilization country? Would it be individual farms mostly focusing on you know dairy producing animals and maybe chickens for eggs? Or, or do you think it has to be more diversified than that? As a basis, I think that's very good with as many perennial plants as possible. Trees producing fruits, for example, so that there isn't the constant plowing up and a waste of energy that way. What about seafood? Do you think seafood has an important role in a in society's food supply? Um, there isn't as much of it as as people used to think. Uh, it's very easy to deplete it in a few years. By, uh, uh, well, uh, starting with uh, uh, abolishing uh, fish oil uh, and uh, uh, the, the abolishing the the conversion of uh, uh, gigantic uh, amounts of fish uh, into uh, pet food and fertilizer, for example, uh, uh, that would go out with the fish oil industry, uh, 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 use, using seafood for fertilizer uh, and uh, uh, j- just destroying uh, a big part of the uh, uh, o- ocean uh, a- animal life uh, is a uh, going to maybe help the oceans regenerate too. So with that sort of a mode of production, let's use the economic term, um, do you think that naturally the countries will become smaller in terms of population? It's just there's no there's no need for hundreds of millions of people if they're going to be mostly self-sufficient, right? Uh, uh, yeah, lots of countries are, are shrinking in population now uh, and are trying to actually uh, uh, re- recruit more people to come in or to reproduce faster. It's natural tendency when uh, uh, insecurity has been the main 
driver of population increase. Uh, poor people uh, had no social security, and uh, uh, so they would uh, have several kids uh, who would uh, be able to support them uh, in their old age. Uh, and so uh, every generation needed their social security uh, by expanding the population. Uh, as soon as a population gets uh, um, a fairly modest degree of social security, uh, they stop having too many kids, uh, and the population starts shrinking naturally. You just you just brought uh, brought up a great point, Danny and I discussed last week. Uh, apparently, despite all the propaganda that's being produced by the media, um, if you look at the actual numbers on demographics, the expectation for the world population is not at all to explode. In fact, they expect a you know slight increase to maybe nine billion by 2050, and then by the turn of the next century, they expect the world population to go back to about two to three billion, precisely because of you know, if 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 the processes of improved security continue, then people are just not going to have that many kids as they used to. Uh, uh, yeah, that that was uh, pretty well demonstrated uh, uh, around 1970. Uh, uh, there, there were some very good articles published uh, then, but uh, the, the the political biologists. Uh, uh, the uh, Malthusians uh, insist uh, that uh, they they need more authoritarianism uh, because uh, uh, population is uh, uh, predetermined to to explode, and so you need uh, to uh, control uh, this unruly growth. So, in other words, the the way to population control is by helping people, not harassing them, and try to do everything possible to kill them, physically limit their numbers. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The the uh, uh, the, the idea of a, a basic uh, uh, income, basic guaranteed national income of a thousand or two thousand dollars a month for every citizen, uh, uh, that is going to be a kind of social security that uh, let, lets people uh, do what they're interested in, get educated, uh, uh, find interesting work rather than destructive, uh, foolish work making anything that can be sold. Uh, people people don't like doing the kind of stupid jobs they're doing. Uh, and uh, if they can stop, they will, uh, and that will uh, re remove the need to worry about who's going to support them in old age. You pointed out some nuances about that, though, right? Like if Amazon was giving that UBI, <laughs> like that would be a, pro <clears throat> a problem, right? Whereas uh, like you, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you you said positive things about like Stalin and Lenin and Marxism and, and communism, you, do you think that is going back to the roots of what makes us human kind of in more in line with the animal society versus this fake society, which has kind of led us to all these issues that we're experiencing at the moment? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the uh, ideology of competition, uh, competitive individualism uh, has been uh, indoctrinated into people, uh, but uh, like uh, uh, Ropotkin uh, said, it, it, if you look at nature uh, all the way from bacteria up, uh, cooperation is uh, our basic instinct uh, uh, within and between species. Uh, it has been only a few, uh, 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 basically, uh, uh, authoritarian uh, political theorists who have uh, promoted the, uh, uh, the red in tooth and claw idea of nature that it's all uh, competition uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, the, um, uh, the destroy uh, all of the competition uh, uh, that, that that's a, a, a very trivial uh, ideology that is powerfully uh, supported by uh, the right-wing foundations. 
Well, I've, I've read this comment a thousand times and, and somebody will say, you know, Ray is a genius about nutrition, but he's extremely out of touch with his uh, political leanings. So do you maybe want to uh, address that? <laughs> like what 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 information is required or even has been hidden from somebody that is um, like I, I linked that Prager U video about uh, how horrific communism, Marxism, Stalin, and, and Lenin are. So what what is the... Oh, a, a good place to start is uh, by uh, uh, looking at a criticism of the major hist American historians of, of, of uh, the uh, Soviet Union or Stalin or Trotsky. Uh, 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 we have a falsified history of, of Trotsky uh, just as much as of Stalin. Uh, uh, Trotsky's co connections to the, the U.S. and Hitler have uh, al almost totally been uh, el eliminated, but uh, uh, there, there is convincing data uh, that he was acting as an agent uh, for for Germany and the U.S. way back uh, at while, while he was still still in Russia, uh, and uh, if you look at the evidence uh, uh, that the historians have simply lied uh, about uh, all of these people, uh, uh, for, for example, if you just think historically uh, uh, about uh, what the the great uh, famine in the Ukrainian a uh, uh, famine that is called genocide, uh, and uh, where Stalin uh, is accused of creating the famine to eliminate uh, uh, the kulaks and uh, 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 create ma mass murder. Uh, uh, the U.S. immediately uh, after World War One uh, not only took its troops uh, and sent them with other European armies to invade. Uh, the Soviet Union, but they started collaborating with Germany on the development of biological warfare. Uh, and one of Germany's uh, advances in that w was developing a, a fungus uh, that kills uh, wheat plants by invading the developing seed uh, called uh, wheat rust blight. And the famine uh, the, the, the Stalin's people uh, and all of the agronomists uh, 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 that were watching uh, the production of crops uh, were uh, seeing a, a great bumper crop uh, of uh, wheat production coming on uh, in the year that uh, led to the famine. Uh, they were seeing the big heads of wheat growing. Uh, and when it came time to harvest them, they found that the uh, seeds, the, the heads were big, but the seeds were absent. Uh, they had been destroyed by the wheat rust blight, something that German, Germany and the U.S. had been working on as germ warfare. Uh, so it uh, creates a big question about who caused the Ukraine famine, which is uh, one of the, the main propaganda pieces uh, against Stalin. Uh, and uh, if uh, one historian, uh, a professor uh, who had been an English professor and specialist in medieval uh, English history, uh, got interested in uh, Russian history when he, uh, he discovered uh, some outright lies in standard uh, American history books. Uh, and uh, uh, he has done a series of I guess about 15 books. Uh, a good one to start with is Khrushchev lied. Uh, and uh, Khrushchev uh, was uh, uh, fun functioning in some ways as an agent of the CIA. Uh, he was going along uh, with the American doctrine. Uh, and following uh, uh, the, the analysis of Khrushchev's lies, he uh, then goes into several of the major uh, uh, American historians uh, and 
documents in tremendous detail, page after page of fabricated uh, documents uh, saying that some documents didn't exist, which were uh, incriminating uh, in the wrong direction, uh, using mistranslations, uh, every sort of uh, historical uh, evil that you, uh, has been uh, criticized. Uh, these uh, recognized major American uh, historians uh, are basically liars. Uh, and uh, a lot of it is because they believe their lies. Uh, but, but you can see that uh, uh, that they are, are uh, every opportunity they're they're bending uh, things uh, to suit their ideology. Have you read the? Uh, so, I'm blanking on the author. People's History of the United States. I think it's called. Uh, what was the history? Uh, it, there's a book by a historian. Uh, it's a fairly recent book. It's called People's History of the United States. Oh, oh, um, as in. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think he has a chapter there where he describes that there was a there was a civil war before the civil war. It was called the war the war of the regulation, um, where basically the 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 colonists, the regular colonists who were doing all the work, uh, revolted because I think with the very high taxes that the uh, that the emerging elite was imposing on them, and it was brutally suppressed. And there isn't that that episode is 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 virtually unknown in in the regular history cur curriculum that that people learn in school. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good example of uh, comparing him to the standard uh, histories. Uh, uh, and uh, the trouble is that on the issue of of Nazi Germany and the uh, Soviet Union, uh, America has been so closely tied uh, with the development of Nazism. Uh, and the opposition to uh, the, the Soviet version of socialism, uh, that uh, essentially there uh, has been no uh, pub no book published in the U.S. Uh, uh, that is properly critical of those. It, it takes a, a huge amount of work to uh, l look at uh, all of the standard uh, uh, incriminating uh, 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 things uh, and justification for uh, the, the people who subsidized the development of Nazism, uh, but uh, it's really worth it to uh, try to sort out uh, how how we've been brainwashed now for about a hundred years. It, just because people will say it in the comments, what what's your definition of Nazism? <laughs> <laughs>
so he he was the uh, the agent and mouthpiece uh, of the banks and uh, and uh, giant industrialists both of uh, uh, America and uh, Germany and the rest of Europe. It, it, do you think there's merit to the idea that he was supported in order to to move the Jewish community to Israel? Well, it's called like the I'm forgetting the name, but it was like some rich Jewish families had actually supported Hitler. Is, is there any merit to that? Do you think? Uh, 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 yeah, the, the, Hitler really wanted to get uh, Jews out of Germany as part of his uh, propaganda business that it, it isn't capitalists it's only Jews uh, but, but uh, the, there were uh, the Zionists who, who uh, uh, saw, saw that as their opportunity uh, the same with England uh, uh, they they uh, made deals with the English uh, to to give them Palestine uh, and they were getting support from Germany for a while uh, uh, to uh, move out the Jews into uh, Palestine, so uh, they had uh, overlapping interests. And, and one more for me: um, communism. You know, like would would we all be in a better situation if we if tomorrow uh, our our system was replaced by communism? Or are there asterisks to that? Like, uh, do uh, uh, no, no, it, it would automatically be just as <laughs> a rotten swamp of communism as it is of so-called democracy. Okay, thank you. Thank you for... Go ahead, sorry. Oh, yeah, me? No, no I was going to say thank you for saying that because I think that's the... I, there's a lots of knee-jerk reactions to that. So, I mean, so, I mean, give us a picture of what would be needed to organize in that way. And also, correct me if I'm wrong, but your biological views stem or not stem but they progress into your organizational views and so like some people have asked like oh i don't understand where ray's starting place is but obviously it's like biological organization and that and that's that stems into how you think uh it might be uh, uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, reading cozy uh, uh, yeah. uh, when i was uh, about 14 or so uh, uh, convinced me to start looking at the counter to the so-called Darwinian uh, competitive uh, 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 individualist uh, view of life. Uh, and uh, it worked uh, everywhere you look. Uh, uh, and the way the organism, uh, as well as the, the species and the ecosystem, uh, uh, Kozirov uh, w was right uh, all the way from uh, the, the biggest uh, ecological interactions down to the simplest cellular uh, and biochemical interactions. Uh, it's uh, uh, I interactive and uh, cooperative from top to bottom. Speaking of Kozirev, um, I, I've been wanting to bring this up for a long time. Uh, we've heard that you, you went to Russia, to the Soviet Union, using a boat. Um, <laughs> was that hard? <laughs> Did it require uh, no, I, I went, went on a student boat. Uh, it cost $200, uh, and it was a very uh, leisurely nine-day uh, trip, uh, very pleasant. Uh, was it from uh, East Coast to Russia, to, to the Soviet Union somewhere? or uh, uh, no, no, just to England and then train through Russia. Oh, okay. And, uh, uh, we didn't go on a tour. We just uh, went where we wanted, uh, and... Uh, uh, the, the, we we got to uh, just walk around and, and look for people. Uh, turned out that uh, most of the people I wanted to talk to were on vacation. Everyone <laughs> went on vacation for the summer uh, during that period. Uh, but uh, uh, and uh, uh, Lysenko, I, I wanted to talk to him, and I went to his lab, and he only came to the lab one day a week, and. Uh, didn't match with the time I was in Moscow, uh, but uh, I, I got to talk to uh, the biomagnetism man, uh, Yuri Holodov, uh, and he gave me a, a, a very uh, good uh, uh, list of books, uh, things that 
uh, were available in the U.S., uh, a lot of them uh, that my professors uh, never would have uh, heard of. Wasn't the KGB so, interested of, like, who is this American with thick sideburns <laughs> trying to interview our scientists here? <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, the the science people were very nice and open. Uh, 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 Holodov uh, said he wasn't allowed to uh, show his lab to foreigners, but uh, he told me everything he was doing and, and gave me this uh, printed uh, uh, big big help for my uh, later study. Uh, and uh, the, the, um, the, the tourist people... Uh, uh, they, they didn't like uh, my disrupting their routine by just uh, not joining a tour and such. Uh, but it was an opportunity to take the subway around and uh, uh, see who was in the uh, headquarters of the uh, 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 science establishment, uh, walk around the university and such. What do you think led to the downfall of Lysenko? I mean, he seems initially to be, uh, he was on a, such a pedestal, and then suddenly there was this 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 180-degree turn, uh, uh, you it, know, fully it, pro-Western. Uh, uh, it, it was, um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the Khrushchev, uh, for, for, for a while, supported uh, Lysenko and, and what he was doing uh, uh, wanting to support massive uh, organic farms, for example. Uh, Khrushchev supported Lysenko in that. But when uh, Khrushchev went out, uh, then that, that was the end of uh, Lysenko's career. Uh, w- Wikipedia says, Lysenko was a strong proponent of soft inheritance and rejected Mendelian genetics in favor of pseudoscientific ideas termed Lysenkoism. <laughs> and so... Uh, 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 yeah, also known yeah, as Lamarckism. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you could, until a few years ago, you could uh, usually uh, uh, get a some old uh, professor to almost have a stroke <laughs> by saying something good about the uh, thing. He, he was uh, a, a probably a more popular uh, target for a lot of people than Stalin, uh, but... Uh, uh, for example, he uh, anticipated Barbara McClintock in the work that got her the Nobel Prize uh, and uh, epigenetics. Uh, everything he did uh, now is not at all controversial, uh, but uh, he increased uh, grain production and, and food production, uh, people who used his methods. Uh, but uh, the uh, academic uh, geneticists still had lots of power. Uh, the Soviet Union wasn't at all monolithic. Uh, the, the Western uh, factions in science were very powerful. So you mentioned Khrushchev and Trotsky and potentially others uh, at, at the Soviet leadership being um, at least ideologically aligned with the CIA. Do you think that's what may have had a, a role to play in um, Lysenko's downfall and, and in general for the uh, rigidification of the Soviet Union, eventually its collapse, uh, basically it turned it turned towards the you know the Western ideals, and that was really the goal to undermine it from within. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Lysenko re- represented the uh, the truly material <coughs> uh, materialist uh, approach to reality, <coughs> and. <coughs> Uh, Western genetics uh, theory represents uh, the uh, imposed uh, rationalist, reductionist uh, approach to uh, reality. Uh, uh, So uh, the the Western Westernization uh, required uh, knocking out uh, any of the remaining uh, actual materialists. Uh, and materialism, uh, one of uh, Lenin's best pieces of writing was uh, ex- explaining uh, is essentially that uh, uh, the concept of materialism uh, in the West uh, is pure uh, idealism. Uh, 
absolutely the negation of of materialism in in Lenin's sense. Uh, L- Lenin uh, said knowledge is composed uh, of memory, but the memories are uh, recordings of experience, and experience is always new, and the source of experience is matter, and so matter is only what is potential to be experienced. So materialism means looking to the future and the possibilities of experience, where the genetics and reductionists uh, uh, try to base uh, their rationalism on an organization of uh, existing knowledge, uh, pre-existing ideas, uh, and uh, breaking those down into logical, uh, computable units and so on. Uh, the, the essence of, uh, of uh, Lenin's type of materialism uh, is uh, uh, essentially uh, uh, identifying it with the life process uh, the process of being conscious uh, and having new experience uh, is the process of I- interacting uh, with the material world. So this is the same idea as Aristotle's prima matter, right? The the, the pure potential out of which everything arises. Is that is uh, that yeah, yeah, your understanding? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. creative potential. Okay, I, I I got an email from from a listener who said, uh, "How can you guys?" You know, talk about Aristotle and and you know all of these things that he did, right? When he in fact wrote an entire book and called it "Natural Slavery." Um, are you familiar with these writings of Aristotle? Uh, oh uh, no, no, not that. But um, uh, he he did so many things right. Uh, uh, you you don't want to throw uh, everything out just because of uh, uh, some. He, he was. Uh, much less authoritarian than Plato, for example. Uh, Plato did some things right, saying that uh, you shouldn't impose uh, education on children. You, you should let them play, uh, uh, educate themselves. Uh, 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 the, the, uh, you, you look at uh, what someone has to offer, uh, and uh, uh, Aristotle uh, has a uh, he, he was a source for uh, uh, much of the good uh, thinking of the medieval philosophers, uh, and much of it got into uh, Christian theology uh, by, by way of, of uh, uh, Islamic and, and Jewish theology. But uh, 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 the, the good parts of Christianity uh, are d- derived from largely from uh, uh, Aristotelian ideas modified by the uh, uh, medieval philosophers, uh, and uh, 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 Lenin uh, uh, picked out uh, th- these good uh, uh, developmental, uh, future-oriented, uh, uh, unfinished business uh, part- parts of Aristotle. Do Do you think preference for idealistic theories may be indicative of some sort of a prenatal stress while the person was still in the womb and then that imprinted uh, them for life? I, I think that's part of the imprinting process, uh, uh, starting with prenatal inflammation and stress. Uh, it, it goes with the, uh, the quality of breastfeeding. Uh, the, the baby detects uh, the mother's anxiety or, or happiness and pleasure. Uh, and if the mother is uh, not uh, comfortable and, and uh, pleased to be uh, uh, feeding the baby, uh, the baby starts uh, assimilating uh, those ideas uh, and uh, it starts uh, uh, seeing things instead of uh, uh, the mother as a source of everything uh, living and good, uh, it starts seeing uh, objects as, as threats uh, objects begin to be uh, closed, uh, self-contained, uh, 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 Leibnizian uh, sort of units, uh, no, no windows, windowless monads, uh, uh, and uh, uh, 
uh, this develops into the uh, the preference for things that aren't wiggly and changeable, and, and so it wants uh, timeless objects and looks for the uh, ultimate unchanging uh, basis of, of matter, uh, which turns out to be uh, logical atoms or, or quanta or digits. Do you think the current epidemic of third-person daycare, so-called, where mothers literally... I don't want to call it abandon, but they, they give their tiny little babies away to people completely unrelated to the baby. I mean, the baby must be certainly capable of sensing that it's being um, taken care of if if they even provide the same amount of care by a person that's completely unknown and unrelated to the baby. That must be a pretty severe stress for a young organism. Uh, well, if, if they get good breastfeeding uh, from the substitute mother, uh, a wet nurse, it can be a very good mother, uh, and uh, probably the, uh, the the more complex uh, antibody support uh, uh, for, from a, a, a volunteer new mother, uh, if she is giving all of the signals uh, of loving uh, support to the baby, uh, then it's perfectly uh, uh, equivalent, I think. Uh, very few daycares are like that. I mean, I guess maybe I should have said like the third person. In other words, there is there are these businesses where it's almost like a farm. You give uh, your baby, uh, no, and, and no. there's yeah, no, okay, uh, yeah, uh, that's like the the horrible orphanages where where they uh, tend them like in a factory and bottle feed them uh, and keep them wrapped up uh, and uh, are essentially brain damaging them uh, uh, as thoroughly as they can. Why do you think orphanages closed in the United States? They closed around the what is it, the sixties or the seventies? Uh, what was the first part? Oh, why do you why think did... the orphanages disappeared in the United States? They seem to be all over the place in the first half of the twentieth century. And suddenly, they were gone, almost like in a very short period of time. I, I, I guess they uh, they found foster parents uh, as a substitute, but uh, lots of the foster parents. Uh, turned out to be just as bad as the orphanages. Well, the reason I'm asking is because it seems to me that from a from a authoritarian point of view, orphanage seems like the perfect breeding ground for imprinting whatever pathological ideas you would like on a very large p- portion of the population. Uh, uh, yeah, and for the uh, uh, National Institutes of Health to experiment on. Yeah, that's right. Ray, something you might be able to... Oh, okay, well, let me back up a second. The last time we chatted about race, some of the things that were said were construed as you having overwhelming support for uh, Black Lives Matter. And so do do you maybe want to, one, comment on that? And then, two, I wanted to get into whether, like, a a pejorative um, insult to Black Lives... Or, or no, no, not an insult, but some people say Black Lives Matter is Marxist. And so... One, it's what Mar- they say it's Marxist, what? and so I wanted to. I know I know that you have an understanding of that, and I wanted maybe if you could comment on that. I, I've heard that uh, um, Soros, his organizations are, are funding it largely. Uh, I don't uh, know exactly who they are, uh, but uh, to, to the extent that. Uh, they are doing uh, destructive things. A lot of that, uh, I think, is uh, uh, historically uh, uh, the the police have sent in uh, uh, rock throwers and window breakers uh, uh, to uh, peaceful uh, demonstrations uh, so that the police can then go in and arrest and beat people. Uh, I think there's still a lot of that going on uh, under the, uh, uh, the the name of Black Lives Matter, uh, but uh, I don't know who who really is is uh, the the main influence on it. But the, obviously, the whole idea uh, that police shouldn't murder citizens, whatever color they are, uh, 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 the, the uh, it, it's obvious that. Uh, they are murdering a lot more 
uh, blacks than whites, especially in proportion to their uh, percentage of the population. Uh, and uh, uh, so concentrating uh, on uh, uh, stopping uh, uh, the murderous police uh, should be everyone's concern. It wouldn't matter whether uh, uh, Soros or uh, Karl Marx or whoever was financing them. Uh, but uh, I, I think people use the word Marxism with, without the slightest idea of, of what it means. <laughs> okay, in the I think maybe the first or second chat we had, we, we already talked about it a little bit about like this animal reality and approaching societal and health problems from that angle. Uh, is Marxism his the class? Does that make sense given that what we had talked about earlier, like the uh, uh, splitting everything up into different classes and seeing is uh, issues in relation to that. Does that relate to the animal kingdom at all, do you think? Uh, um, uh, uh, Marx, Marx and Engels uh, were uh, uh, creating organizations and uh, uh, doing mass e education uh, and trying to clarify uh, thinking uh, uh, and uh, uh, they were uh, Engels in particular was was planning a, a, a more general philosophical scientific uh, explanation of what Marxism uh, implies uh, uh, the uh, idea of uh, uh, development is uh, really the only uh, key concept. Uh, uh, Hegel uh, saw uh, logic, uh, logical interactions, uh, the dialectic, uh, as the motor of history, and logic reaches uh, a con conclusion. History comes to an end. Uh, the ruling class sits there forever. Uh, Marx said he had it upside down, uh, uh, basically, that uh, things are developing, uh, but it's not uh, driven by uh, ideas uh, and concepts, uh, and uh, so its outcome uh, is not going to be the same uh, that Hegel foresaw. Uh, Hegel uh, was uh, rationalizing uh, for the ruling class that wanted e eternal, uh, stable power, uh, and uh, Marx uh, wanted the, the same thing uh, that uh, uh, a lot of the Christian communitarians, Christian thinkers, and people putting uh, uh, their ideas into practice, uh, uh, trying to uh, eliminate destructive competition, uh, warfare, and so on. Uh, uh, if you look at the history of of the, the Christian socialists uh, and Marx, uh, what Marx uh, added uh, was the idea of development uh, as the essential thing. Uh, it's in the nature uh, of people and society and substance uh, to go on developing. Uh, and uh, there's a, a branch of professors who like to call themselves Marxists who are simply uh, Hegelians uh, who, who uh, think it's more adventuresome to cause, call themselves uh, Marxists, but uh, they subscribe to the idea of the dialectic uh, uh, having uh, the, these units. Uh, uh, for, for Marx, uh, they were provisional. Uh, the, the class division uh, was in the process itself of defining itself and changing uh, constantly. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, all of the units uh, interacting in, in Marxism are, are themselves open and in process. Uh, uh, there, there's not a trace of the uh, Hegelian authoritarian I idealism uh, in the thought of, of Marx and Engels and Lenin. Uh, and Lenin did a, a really good job uh, on the level of, of language and ontology. Uh, almost no one reads uh, those because uh, uh, they overlap uh, with Whitehead and the Christian uh, uh, process theologians. Uh, uh, 
uh, they uh, went uh, he, he went a, a few steps farther than uh, uh, Bertrand Russell uh, in clarifying the nature of of language and logic uh, uh, and so people uh, uh, just don't like to touch the uh, the immense implications of of how far uh, angles went uh, in the meaning uh, of process and development. And could a, a dynasty like the Rockefellers or Rothschilds or Vanderbilt or whatever, could that be sustained under kind of a, uh, I don't know, a, a Marxist, Marxist philosophy, do you think? Uh, could could but the the the, which, the, all, which, the oligarchs the dynasties that uh, the 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 Rothschilds the oh, Rockefellers oh, is that is that impossible under a Marxist philosophy, or is that more related oh, to oh, communism? Sure. Uh, uh, no, no, the oligarchy uh, uh, people, uh, the concept of people that uh, leads to ideas. Uh, uh, such as as a ruling class uh, or uh, uh, class superiority and so on. Uh, uh, it's all embedded in history and, and process. Uh, uh, the working class uh, is uh, uh, what actually produces the stuff that makes the economy run uh, and uh, that becomes... Uh, uh, the, what is manipulated by the bankers and so on. Uh, so, uh, as uh, as they function, uh, they are they are the source of meaning and change. Uh, but but the whole thing, all of the parts of the process are, are in change and continuous definition. Uh, and uh, you, you can't possibly. Uh, 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 imagine a, a terminal state of of such a process, uh, uh, much less a, a stable oligarchy. Uh, it, uh, once you have uh, 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 the, the recognition uh, that these timeless uh, definitions uh, of matter uh, or, or organization uh, uh, that these are logically impossible constructions. Uh, they self-contradict themselves uh, out of existence. Uh, and uh, so what you have is a, a continuing biological-like process. If I can make an analogy, um, as you said, knowledge um, and memory is not matter. They're, they're, they, they actually come from matter, and matter is pure potential. Would it be a sort of correct analogy, or at least along the correct lines, to say that the social structures, the working class and the ruling class are sort of the analogies of memory and the matter. In other words, the working class is the potential that's producing progress, and the ruling class is the memory of what the ruling class has produced. In other words, a record right. of what the uh, right. ruling class uh, has produced. Uh, 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 and they, they want to um, uh, uh, solidify this memory into uh, an eternal platonic uh, uh, thing that can't be tampered with. Uh, that That's where the whole uh, computer ideology comes from. If it's computable, it, it has, its place in time uh, is irrelevant. It's what it is, and it always will be that. Uh, and, and so the, uh, the ideology uh, is frozen memory. Uh, and uh, it, it can only uh, persist as far as it uh, tries to freeze uh, the productive processes. Uh, I was reading Lenin's works a few weeks ago, and in, in one of the books, I've, I'm forgetting the name, he responds to criticism that he's just proposing yet another idea. And just like any, uh, any idea eventually will become obsolete. And he said, no, all we're doing is, all, all we're faithful to is the process of dialectical materialism and and uh, analyzing and learning more into the nature of matter as we go along. That's the only thing we are faithful for, the actual process of change. Um, and if you think that's an ideology, that's fine, but it's always going to change. So um, do you think that's, that's like a, um, I don't know, more or less a correct statement? Uh, 
uh, very very clearly stated uh, it's what science should be and exactly what science isn't working as now I see. Um, in regards to intelligence, not sure if you know, but the, the the courts in the United States have ruled that even though companies or really any employer is actually prohibited from discriminating based on intelligence, police departments and the military are the only two structures legally actually not only allowed to discriminate based on intelligence, but actively encouraged to do so. To what degree do you think the, the IQ test is, is valid? In other words, police and military are allowed to disqualify people who are too smart, who score, who score too high. Do you think that, that IQ test has any merit, or do you think it's entirely uh, bogus? Uh, 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 that principle has uh, actually been in practice in graduate schools in the U.S. <laughs> uh, uh, they, they don't like uh, critics, uh, and high IQ people uh, used to be uh, dangerous critics. Uh, uh, and uh, so that they were uh, flanked out as as quick as possible. Uh, and uh, any organization doesn't doesn't like critics, uh, and, and so they have to, uh, to to the extent that the uh, IQ test actually uh, discovers intelligence. Uh, uh, some of the tests, uh, 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 the the Cattell scale uh, uh, was uh, really a, a class. Uh, identification uh, rather than uh, uh, identifying dangerous intelligence. It was uh, identifying uh, acceptable class uh, manners uh, as high IQ. So the power structures currently select for stupidity <laughs> rather directly. Uh, uh, right. Uh, sociologists and psychologists uh, of uh, in the 50s, they d did quite a few studies like that showing that uh, the various corporations, uh, the uh, top uh, IQ uh, that had success was about 120 uh, in accounting uh, companies. 130 was okay. Uh, uh, grad school, it, it was similar. Uh, 130 was fine, but 160 was uh, definitely questionable. <laughs> Too dangerous. Could I? Yeah. Could IQ be a? Um, is there any way to predict criminality? <laughs> like because of that? Like the? There's a quote. It's from Neil Brickham of the CIA, and he says, "I have described the CIA as a socially acceptable way of expressing criminal tendencies. A guy who has a strong cr uh, criminal tendencies but is too much of a coward to be one would wind up in a place like the CIA if he had the education." <laughs> I, I, yeah, th there's there's quite a bit of evidence that. Uh, uh, the people who choose to go into police uh, departments uh, are uh, biased in that that direction. They see uh, the ability to exercise power as uh, something they want. I have a question about China because we're hearing about China all the time. It used to be Russia, now it's China. Um, and, and despite the fact that we're, you know, of course, all, a lot of it is propaganda. Um, China seems to be engaging currently in a lot of the same imperialistic power grabs that the current empire is is, is still doing. Um, wh what is your opinion of China as a, I don't know, as a beacon or non-beacon of civilization? Do you think they're doing some things right, or do you think they're just another, another empire on the rise? Uh, their empire is based on capitalism now, uh, and uh, the great uh, uh, distress of the Pentagon is that they've been doing capitalism better in the United States Empire, uh, and uh, that uh, Eric Schmidt's uh, uh, com na National Commission, uh, 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 National Defense Commission on Artificial Intelligence, uh, uh, d described the need uh, to destroy the present uh, economy so that we can uh, go uh, directly to artificial intelligence uh, uh, and get there faster than China. Otherwise, China is on, on course uh, to uh, uh, re reach a, a, a computerization uh, degree of automation that will uh, make them unbeatable. So uh, the Pentagon uh, got 
uh, Google's er Eric Schmidt to head this commission, and now Governor Cuomo in New York is uh, 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 instituting uh, Eric Schmidt's uh, uh, plans and uh, and advice in New York, uh, and uh, it's definitely uh, what the World Economic for Forum has in mind uh, for the, for the whole uh, world process uh, to uh, uh, quickly get rid of uh, all of these uh, middle-level free enterprises uh, and go directly to uh, automation uh, and uh, a complete monopoly of of the banks and uh, Amazon type corporations. So, so I guess both countries are, are going towards complete automation. Wouldn't that make a very large portion of the Chinese population useless, as you said, the currently the U.S. population is? Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, to the extent that both uh, are uh, uh, aware of what the World Economic uh, Forum has in mind, uh, uh, China is probably better organized to deal with uh, this world collapse of the economy for the pandemic uh, uh, and uh, 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 American middle level corporations are. Uh, so what do you think China is going, is going to do with its one plus billion useless people once full automation phase is reached or significantly automated? Uh, they're dying all the time. They just have to uh, limit reproduction a little more and they'll shrink fastly. Uh, quickly. So China is very much a copy of the of the imperialistic blueprint, and and it's just at a larger scale. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, well, it, it doesn't have a thousand military bases uh, like the U.S., uh, so it's depending on uh, the market economy, uh, and that's what uh, uh, the pandemic uh, w was designed uh, to. Uh, uh, get rid of uh, uh, the ordinary market economy uh, and um, move straight to uh, a, a mandate economy. So do you foresee at some point some sort of a union between the two? It seems to me as a, if somebody was an evil genius would say, hey, China, you supply the economy since you're so good at capitalism and you, US, you will supply the military. Doesn't that seem like a match made in heaven or hell, <laughs> depending on how you look at it? Yeah, yeah world uh, uh, capital is deeply involved in uh, Chinese production, uh, so they're already uh, representing uh, a world empire, uh, and uh, it's sort of a, a sub-theme uh, that there's competition between uh, Chinese world uh, capital uh, and uh, 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 what America has left of, of a productive capital. Uh, the, the trouble is that uh, so much of American industry went to uh, China and other countries uh, that, uh, that that kind of uh, market capitalism uh, is what is a, a threat to the Pentagon. So maybe the word oligarchy is just looking at the different countries as suppliers of, of whatever service they can do best. China will do economy. United States will do the weapons. I don't know where. Uh, maybe Africa will give the raw res the raw materials and the resources. And I don't know what Europe, what role Europe has. Maybe it's just you know the aristocracy that's still floating around. That's close to the picture I have of what they have in mind. Uh, we can wrap up here soon. I, I did want to say, Ray, what is your um, prediction or how do you foresee the election coming up? Like, what do you think is going to happen? And then two, does it even matter? <laughs> I, I think it'll matter for two or three months anyway, uh, that uh, it's most likely going to be uh, 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 the installation of Biden, uh, the, the 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 real uh, powers are going to uh, do do anything uh, necessary to get Biden in, uh, and uh, when they get him in, then uh, 
I think the virus is going to uh, ha- go on vacation <laughs> uh, for two or three months. <laughs> What, uh, from your estimation, you know, I'm not a doctor, but he s- seems to have serious mental problems. Is that, what do you think is going on there? Uh, that really doesn't bother anyone to have a, a stupid president. <laughs> uh, if you read Eisenhower's uh, statements to the press, uh, he, he really didn't uh, have, have much knowledge of what he was doing. But, go ahead. Have, have you seen the, uh, I mean, there were so many different videos of a- uh, An- Angela Merkel shaking uncontrollably, uh, Hillary Clinton collapsing mm. uh, during the first, the, the 2016 um, election. Um, what do you think is going on? Is this like, are they <laughs> neurologically damaged? Do you think there's there's something else going on? These people seem completely, it's not just stupidity. They seem to be rather physiologically unwell. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they have the very best medical care. <laughs> uh, uh, looking at Hillary's face, uh, you can imagine the dose of prednisone she's been getting. Uh, uh, and uh, I think all of the top political people uh, have... Uh, I, I've had friends who were in the, uh, the army uh, and... Uh, uh, so they took advantage of uh, the very uh, good medical care that uh, that army people do, uh, and uh, they died uh, very prematurely. Uh, I, I think um, uh, intense medical supervision uh, will deteriorate your brain and and immune system uh, pretty quickly. Last question is, do you think there is any country or region in the world that is at least attempting to embark on the, I don't want to call it the right path, but more more of a pro-civilization attitude? Or do you think it's all it's all basically under the control of the, of the world capital? Uh, uh, the, the little opposition countries, uh, Iran has its good points, uh, uh, Venezuela and Cuba are doing lots of good things. Uh, uh, anyone who tries to break out of, of the system, uh, 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 Libya uh, under Gaddafi uh, had r- really big plans to uh, break out of the uh, the dollar economy and to create a, a new currency to break African imperialism. Uh, it, it would have democratized uh, uh, Africa to the extent that it would have ruined the empire forever. Uh, but uh, uh, there, there are lots of little countries that uh, would like to break out of the uh, empire and and will keep trying to do it. I think that's uh, that's uh, going to be a good possibility for uh, uh, stopping the the deterioration. On a related note, uh, I heard that Saddam was invaded in 2003. The moment he proposed a, um, you know, a, a creation of a oil stock exchange where the oil will be traded in euros or rubles, and within a week, <laughs> there was invasion already underway. Uh, yeah, uh, and they say that uh, Kennedy, uh, his money policy was uh, one of the decisive factors. So in terms of pro civilization, sometimes I guess it does it does pay off to be small. You, you're, you're simply not that interesting to the big powers, so you're you're given a little bit of freedom to do what you want. Mm-hmm. Awesome. <laughs> okay, Ray, let me read some of these super chats. These are people that donated, and I've been forwarding those donations to you. Uh, Christina Tomas, uh, ineffable five hundred. Harry Burgos. Uh, oh, let me read them out. Twenty four ninety nine. Twenty dollars. Harry Burgos. Twenty five dollars. Michelle, fifty dollars. Wow. Primitive Initiative, twenty four ninety nine. Achillea, ten dollars. Uh, Brandon Treen, twenty dollars. Uh, unfortunately, guys, I can't uh, read your super chats. I'd love to, but I just it, Ray would be on here for hours, you know. So sincerely appreciate that. I will forward that cash to Ray. Um, Ray, what are you working on at the moment? Um, 
I've been having computer problems, but I'm about to write about education. Okay, I'm going to send you some extra money for computer problems. Uh, but Ray, Ray, <laughs> thank you so much. You know, these are always uh, super fun to have you on, and, uh, and you take time out of your day to do them. Uh, Georgie, p- parting words to Mr. Raymond P. I hope his newsletter will talk about how the dream of Ivan Illich is coming true. Uh, the dream of what? Uh, Ivan Illich of, oh, oh. of the de- schooling society. <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. He, he's one of the people. Uh, uh, everyone from uh, J.J. Rousseau on to Ivan Illich. Uh, at any rate, let everybody know how they can uh, get your newsletter. Uh, Ray Pete's newsletter at gmail dot com. Uh, there's an S in Ray Pete's. And then final question, can people order your books and can people order back issues of of newsletters? Uh, Yeah, both of those same address. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Georgie. Thank you, everybody watching. Thank you for future visitors as well. Uh, Very fun. Thanks again. Everybody take care. Talk to you guys uh, soon. Next week, probably. Okay, bye, everybody. Let me share with you a vision of the future which offers hope. It is that we embark on a program to counter the awesome Soviet missile threat with measures that are defensive. Let us turn to the very strengths in technology that spawned our great industrial base and that have given us the quality of life we enjoy today. What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack, that we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies. I know this is a formidable technical task, one that may not be accomplished by... Victor Technologies, the high-flying hardware computer company which took a nosedive this year, may be bought out by the British firm Applied Computer Technologies. Piloting the space shuttle is very difficult to do, one would think. Can a, a, a kid or a normal person actually pull this off? Well, what I did when I designed this was I, I understood that problem. Uh, it seems the sweep of technology has no limits. In San Francisco this week, the world's first robot bartender was unveiled. The robot can talk and take spoken orders and mix 200 different drinks. But on the first test run, the robot knocked a glass off the bar and onto the floor and poured beer all over the counter. The robot's designer said there were still some bugs to be worked out.
Let me share with you a vision of the future which offers hope. It is that we embark on a program to counter the awesome Soviet missile threat with measures that are defensive. Let us turn to the very strengths in technology that spawned our great industrial base and that have given us the quality of life we enjoy today. What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack, that we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies. I know this is a formidable technical task, one that may not be accomplished by the Victor Technologies, the high-flying hardware computer company which took a nosedive this year, may be bought out by the British firm Applied Computer Technologies. Piloting the space shuttle is very difficult to do, one would think. Can a, a, a kid or a normal person actually pull this off? Well, what I did when I designed this was I, I understood that problem. Uh, it seems the sweep of technology has no limits. In San Francisco this week, the world's first robot bartender was unveiled. The robot can talk, can take spoken orders, and can mix 200 different drinks. But on the first test run, the robot knocked a glass off the bar and onto the floor and poured beer all over the counter. The robot's designer said there were still some bugs to be worked out. 